All right, before we get started, don't forget to check out my giveaway. I'm giving away car charger for free, free to ship. All you gotta do is enter. Comes down January 31st of this year, 2023. So you have until the end of the month to enter. Then I then it's done. It goes away. Good luck. Hey guys, no gas, Nico here. What happens when you lose power? You don't have a generator. Say your generator ran out of gas, but you need to keep your things cool in your refrigerator. You need lights. Maybe you have a well pump you want to run. Uh, there's all kinds of what if scenarios if you lose power. Uh, one thing you can do when you have an EV, you have power. You have a giant battery that's got oh, kilowatts of power that you can use in your house. Now, how do you do that? Well, do what I'm gonna do. Right now, I'm on my way, I just dropped my son off at school. I'm on my way to Harbor Freight. I am going to buy a 2000 watt inverter. Now these inverters, they are, you can get them all different sizes. About the max that I would put on an EV is about 2000 watt inverter. Now you're gonna run it off of your 12 volt battery and uh, the car is going to replenish that battery. So what you need to do is you need to turn the car on, turn everything off, turn the radio off, turn the heater off, all the lights off, everything's off. So basically the keys are in the car, the car is on and ready to drive. And that will allow the main battery, the big battery, whether it's a 24 kilowatt hour, 60 kilowatt hour, 100 kilowatt hour, whatever size battery you have, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have kilowatts to be able to power your house. So that main battery is going to keep recharging a 12 volt battery as it, draw, as it draws down. So basically you have what would seem like a seamlessly endless supply of power. Yeah, it does end, but I'm gonna do that. I'm on my way to Harbor Freight. I'm gonna buy an inverter. Little tip, you want a pure sine wave inverter if you're gonna run anything that has electronics. You don't want, I call it dirty power. So you want something that has a clean, positive, alternating current. So it's gonna be clean, positive, the back to neutral, negative, back to neutral. And here's a picture of a sine wave. Now a modified sine wave, it's not gonna be as clean power. So any electronics are gonna need that. So make sure when you buy one, if you're gonna run computers, anything that's gonna require any sensitive equipment, electronics, you want a pure sine wave. All right, so off to Harbor Freight, touch back here in a minute. Okay, so I just got back from Harbor Freight. Got my inverter. The thing I've done with this thing is I opened up the box and I read, read the instructions right here. Um, you come with a data cable if you wanted to use it that way. I'm going to use a very simple setup on this. Now it does say to use two gauge cable here. Um, I don't have any two gauge cable, I got four gauge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to use the, I'm not gonna draw the full 2000 watts because I don't want to uh, heat up my cables. So is a Jupiter brand, pure sine wave. Um, got a couple 110 outlets there, um, some USB, one USB, and it's got your negative and positive connections. So, what do I do? Lose power. I need power. Um, I'm gonna run this off of my EV. And what I've done is I've taken this old jumper cable set, and I put these lugs on the end, and I'm going to connect them here, uh, positive and negative. I taped the negative black, that way, I can tell the difference, otherwise these cables look exactly the same. So, and I did check with a meter for continuity and I did tape the correct one so I know I'm not gonna do any damage there. Uh, you do not want to reverse polarity on these things. Uh, you could do a lot of damage. So I took the time to make sure I did it correctly. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go hook it up to the car. I'm gonna let this run off the car. Um, got this little cheap kilowatt 
meter. I'm also going to use this to see how much power I'm drawing. I'm gonna run a little space heater off this. You can run a refrigerator, whatever. So if you lost power and you need this to be able to power something, you can use your EV to do that, depending on how much charge you have stored in your battery. Um, you have a very large battery bank sitting, like mine's a 62 kilowatt hour car. So if I had a full charge, theoretically I could have 62 kilowatt hours of power. Um, actually going 2000 watts at a time, I'm not going to put a dent in that 62 kilowatt hour. So anyway, I'm gonna see this and then I wanna run that space heater for, let's we'll see how much power it draws. And I'm gonna run that space heater for about an hour and look at the before and after percentages of my battery, how much it drew, this and that, and uh, see how long I can run that heater for off of my car um, and this inverter. All right, let's get, I'm gonna go ahead and set everything else up and uh, we'll get started. All right, here we are. Got my inverter, my kilowatt meter, got this infrared space heater. I'm gonna connect this to the car. I'll take some pictures, but we can put them up in the video. So first things first, you always want to connect your ground first. So I'm going to try to get my uh, other camera here to be able to record what I'm doing. So again, you want to do ground first, the ground here, and we'll lift this cover off and go ahead and connect a couple little sparkies. And I should have power here. Turn the power on. Oh, I think I start the car jumped ahead of myself so let me go ahead and start get the car started right. now with the car started we'll go ahead and hit power Check my connections. Ah, that's probably it. Didn't have a good connection. Let me do this again. These are not the best jumper cables. I had Of course, if I was going to do this long term, I'd put better connectors on the end. Those are not very good. So uh, it says system normal. Do I have power? So we're going to take this kilowatt. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the inverter. All right, so if we are on watts, you can see right now there are no watts being drawn. I'll go ahead and plug that heater in. There we go. See right now it's 1.1 watts. Turn power on. It's set for 72 degrees. Heater just kicked on and right now we're drawing 1.3 kilowatts, 1350 watts. There you go.
jumper cables connected to the back of the inverter kilowatt this old infrared heater kicking out some heat this place is system normal it's handling it like a champ so it's working pretty good all right so right now you can see i'm at 79 percent time is 252 I want to let this heater run for half an hour outside and we'll see how much power percentage of my battery I lose and then we'll uh, we'll go from there and see what percentage I'm down in half an hour. All right you can see I'm running this thing at almost 1400 watts and it's running like a champ. I got pictures of lease by here you can see I'm just over two kilowatts power draw off my main battery because what it's doing is it's putting the power back into the 12 volt battery. So I'm pulling power from the 12 volt, I'm supplying power from the traction battery, and it's keeping up just fine. So uh, I'm over 14 volts on the battery, so I'm doing good. Uh, I don't suspect I'm going to be doing any damage to this 12 volt battery. Now if I did this long term, I might hurt a 12 volt battery, but this is just like an emergency setup. I'm not going to do this long term. You can also do this off a gas car. This isn't just strictly EVs. You can connect this same setup to a gasoline powered car, truck. Um, but one thing you have to be careful of, you got to make sure that whatever you're drawing out of that inverter, your alternator is big enough to put back in. So if you're drawing more amps than that alternator can supply, you're going to eventually kill the battery depending on how long you run this. And that's not good. And another thing with a gas you're going to be idling your engine in order for this thing to run, uh, which now you have, you know, you got to make sure you're not parked close to the house or in a garage. With an EV, you can actually have this set up in your garage with the garage door closed and it'll work beautifully. With a gas vehicle, you'll have to run the jumper cables from outside into the inverter. Um, this little setup I have on a folding table is obviously for the video. I would never run a heater outside for... This is just a demonstration. Obviously, I'm wasting energy by doing this video. Um, and It's just for the sake of the video. But I'm not wasting a lot. I was going to do it for an hour, and I decided I'd only do it for half an hour just because I don't want to be that wasteful. Um, you know, electric, electric rates are going up. It costs money. So anyway, so there you go. Get yourself an inverter like this. Now, I do plan on using this inverter for my solar system when I start that in the spring. So I'm not wasting money getting this thing. I'm not going to leave these jumper cables connected to it. I actually have quick disconnects that I bought for two gauge wire. I'm going to buy some two gauge wire for my solar system to run off of my batteries to run, uh, start pulling things off grid and running some electrical components off grid. Um, how big I grow my system. We'll see, we'll see where it goes. Uh, make sure you like subscribe and share, subscribe to see that solar stuff because uh, I'm going to be building it. I'm going to put a put a bunch in the backyard. I'm not going to put them on my roof because I'm probably going to need a roof here in a few years and I don't want to put panels on my roof and then have to pull the panels off, do a roof, put the panels back on. Big hassle. So I'm going to build a structure in the backyard, put the panels on, bury the cable, bring it inside. So that's coming in the future. That's what this inverter was for, but I also wanted to demonstrate that you can use this inverter in, in, in case of an emergency. Uh, we just had a hurricane go through Florida. People were doing this with their electric vehicles and supplying emergency power for what they needed. So in a case of an emergency, it's not a bad idea. They're not that expensive. Here's a picture of it on a rack at Harbor Freight. So you can get these fairly inexpensive and it might be a game changer for you. It might be a lifesaver. And again, you don't have to have an EV to do it. You can do it off a truck, a pickup truck, a gas car, doesn't matter. Um, as long as your alternator is big enough, I can't stress that enough. So make sure you know the output of your alternator. Might have to do some Google research and get an inverter, match it up to where it's not pulling more power than your alternator can supply. All right, I'm coming close to the half an hour, so I'm going to sign off here, and we'll see where we end up for the 30 minutes. Okay, there you go. 77%. It's at 322. Here's a live shot of my Leaf Spy. And you can see 2.2 kilowatt draw. 
And I'll go to the next screen. You can look at my 14.5, about 14 and a half volts, but 119.36, almost 120 amps are being drawn right now off that battery. So that's a pretty significant draw. And you can see here, about 2.2 kilowatts being drawn. So let's get out of the car and see what's happening outside. So 0.72 kilowatt hours used. And it was in 33 minutes. So it says system normal. Being outside, this thing was running it full tilt the whole time. There we go. All right, what'd you think? Leave your comments below. I used 2% battery in half an hour, so that's 4% every hour, or 25 hours worth of running about 1400 watts. So 1.4 kilowatts for about 25 hours. Um, that's not too bad if I had a full battery. Now, obviously, I didn't have a full battery. I had 75% roughly when I was done. So, you know, I got three quarters of a battery. So, at 25 hours, it would probably be less than that, less than 20 hours. I could run off what I have right now. So, not too bad if you have yourself an EV and get yourself one of these inverters in case of an emergency. And you'll be able to keep your food refrigerated, maybe get some heat or air conditioning or run a well pump, whatever you need to do, you can do it. So again, leave your leave your comments down below. I'd like to hear from you. Um, also, if there's any content you'd like to uh, see me provide, put that in the comments also. And don't forget to subscribe, share, click the notification bell for things that come in the future. All right, thanks for watching and God bless.